There was a plan too as well. There was a JD sports bar, a gold shop. It's supposed to be a half a mil in the bag when everyone's counting up all the money from the Melbourne Cup. Or somehow someone was saying that it's, you know, it's 100%. When you're saying 100%, you got to go and do it. What we got, we got the getaway car on that very morning before we pulled up to another house to get the firearm. It was just SWAT cars smashing the front, the back, and the sides as well. All armed up, ready to blaze, you know. All that talk to my gang pulled up, but we pull up and they all did. Yo, it's your boy King Dave here, and this is the Fallon Show. Hope all is going well out there, fam. Uh, how about you introduce yourself, cousin, where you're from? How you doing, everyone? My name is Nono Ahura Ratere Ari'i. I was born in Tahiti, Papeite, and I grew up uh, in Australia. This is one of the cousins here, man, Nono. Um, we've done a bit of time together over there in Melbourne, uh, MRC, uh, Port Phillip. Um, also knew him before that, you know what I mean? So uh, my mums have gone to church together, go to church together, you know, big on the Lord. Now he uh, he brought us back from the dead pretty much, isn't that right, cuz? So, um, yeah, yeah, so, um, how about you start us off, man? So, um, where did you grow up? So, you were born in Tahiti, yes. Um, in my first five years of life, um, after I was born, the I grew up in Naitsutaki in the Cook Islands, and um, my, I was brought up by my grandparents who are God fearing Saint Day of Venice, and I thank God for them, and um. Somehow my family migrated to Australia and um, I seem to be the last one on the way into Australia. This would be about 89, 88, 88, 89, round, round off. And um, yes, yeah, so I, I did come back and forth from uh, Australia to New Zealand, living with an auntie here. And uh, But majority of my duration of my years and my adolescence was in Australia. Yeah. So, um, so, so, because you got deported back to New Zealand, you got New Zealand citizenship, was it, along the way? I didn't really know. I just, I thought uh, I'm just here by passport, and I think that classes me as a, as a citizen, and yeah. that never ran through my head. If I was a citizen over here or Australia, I thought I was Aussie to the Aussie, and wouldn't you know, wouldn't affect yeah. me. But unfortunately. I grew up in Broadie, Broad Meadows, up uh, in the northern suburbs, and then my family migrated down. Sorry, you know, moved over to uh, to Clayton. In high school, uh, education wasn't my thing, but the love and basketball it was it was my crazy. Uh, how do you say it? My love, my passion, and everything uh, in the game of basketball. I tried to. Uh, yeah, I tried, tried my best to, to do well in it. I was uh, very gifted and talented in that sport. And, um, yeah, so school, like I was saying, it wasn't my ideal. The IQ area was oh, terrible. But when it came to sporting and that, that was my drug. And, um, yeah, so... So yeah, this I guy here had, did have a reputation in Clayton for being a mad sports star, even in jail. You know what I mean? This dude was the man at pretty much everything, man. Volleyball, basketball, you name it, footy. So um, yeah, nah, for sure. So what about um, what was Clayton like, man? Uh, back back then, back uh, when you were living there. Man, the good old days in Clayton. Oh wow. Um. You can just run the streets, get up to no good, you know, hook up with the boys and see, see what's what's going on. I mean, what I used to do in my school days, I'd be going in the coals and steal a lot of bar of chocolates and go back to school and sell them all off. So by the time I end of school, we got a box of Carlton, Carlton, uh, Coldies, I will you call it coldies. I don't know the full terms of it. And then, you know, a little bag of yandy, a weed, and <laughs> the that, was us. 
<laughs> Bit of chuff. <laughs> oh, chuff. Oh, mate, that was <laughs> that word, chuff, yes. And um, after school, man, it was the best days at the park, drinking up, smoking with all the boys. Well, you were at school too. Yeah, so Clayton there, there was a bit of uh, um, Cook Island community there, Pacific Island community. Um, I moved around there too when I came to um, to Melbourne there, to Springvale, so next door. Um, yeah, there's the Cook Island churches there also in Clayton, where our mums attend. Um, yeah, nice. Nah, so yeah, a bit of a Cook Island community there. So you ended up going to prison uh, later on in life, um, and we'll go into that, but uh, uh, leading up to that, did you ever, um, had you ever been to prison before that? Nah, none at all, cuz. Yeah. You know, other than being caught and taken into a cop shop and, you know, just slap on the wrist and that's about it. Signing in and all of that. Yeah, or, you know, when you're 13, 14 and that, they don't really do much. You just have your stupid interview and then you're taking home while everyone's having prayer. Oh man! Been there, been there. Oh man. Um. So, all right. So, can you sort of talk about um where sort of things started changing for you? So, um, you know, like what, what, what in the lead up to prison, like um, what was sort of going on in your life um in those years before prison you know like what sort of people were you getting around and what sort of stuff were you doing um before prison um i was i I was heavily into the sport world uh, in the sporting world um i pretty much gave up my contract to play in the gym beam cup to follow a, a stupid bird, you know. The heart was weak, and uh, I wasn't nurtured properly to maintain to stay in the game to get that NRL contract. Unfortunately, I, I let that go. And uh, this, I'm talking about, I was in Sydney at the time, and then I've moved back down to Melbourne, and uh, just started working back with all the boys that introduced me into rugby league. Um, most of them played in the Cook Island International um, squad, and that's what gave me gave me my sort of seed to play league. Because I come from a basketball background, and that's a love in basketball. That was me, but league, uh, I get uh, I scrapped that all up for a bird. Came back to Melbourne. I started walk, uh, working at the Wolf, Myra Goldman. We we're doing um, how do you say? Milk, cheese, UHT milk, uh, powder milk, so I'm talking about. And uh, money was good, bro. Like, But I was one of those guys that was wrought in the system too. So I was, I was getting mad money and cash in hand, and I was cashing in with Centrelink as well. So, like, I, I, I was, happy, I was um, enjoying life and um, abundantly too and carelessly at the same time. And um, in this time... Uh, I got into to doing a bit of training of MMA and uh, I surrounded myself with some some different types of characters and uh, I got onto that and what came with it was another side of life that how to double my money and it was all, you know, when the money's coming in, you're doing nothing, you're flying up and down, travelling in different cars and... So was this to do with like drugs and stuff? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. It was uh, methamphetamines and uh, uh, ingredients to make all the. What was your sort of role in all of that? Um, At the start, I was just doing a bag a week. And unfortunately, um, somehow things have changed. And. Kind of say that uh, I, I, I lost some money in, in, in the process. I had to try and find a way to get it back. Um, so I thought I'd put my hand up. I'll go. I'll do all that hard yard to 
go up and down, bring it down and bring it up. Yeah, so couriering type stuff? Pretty much. Um, I was pretty reckless, even on the planes too. <laughs> and uh, planes and trains, cars, and all of that. Um, and I'm not saying this to big note myself in any kind of way. Um, it's just that's that's what the life that I chose to to walk into, and um, unfortunately, the uh, the downside of it wasn't wasn't probably the best thing of it. It started changing, and it, it didn't look right, didn't feel right. Uh, and in the process, my grandmother passed away. And in, in that, it kind of, you know, money's all gone. Grandma left now. She's, like I'll say, I, I was brought up by my grandparents. That, that was the last branch of my, um, my love of the Lord that brought me into the Lord, you know, that she has left. And yeah, so you ended up getting done for conspiracy to commit armed robbery, which is unfortunately more worse in Melbourne than actually committing an armed robbery. So conspiracy to commit is when they, um, you've obviously been under surveillance, they know what you're going to go do. And so they charge you as if you committed the offense, even though it didn't actually take place. So um, can you sort of run into how that actually started, man? So how that whole, how the whole hold up sort of thing like came into fruition and the people that I, that I had good relationship with in Sydney were, was over my home quite a bit. And um, and they, they were talking to these other boys from Sydney as well. And um, who, 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 who are these ones? Like, bro, you know, back in the 80, uh, 80s, 90s, they'll do banks all day long. You know, they got a big rap sheet about it. I was going, wow. Teaching, thinking on the money, you know what I mean? Like these guys must be the the cooter to go to go collect. And me carelessly saying, I can do that. And then they go, oh, yeah, come on. So I spoke with him. Uh, one of them took me out on a job the week before. We, we went into a drug dealer's house, unfortunately. He wasn't home, but his children was home. And going back to the day that I was arrested with the conspiracy to arm rob, the load of firearm that was in the car, it linked to that um, uh, that aggravated burglary the week before. And so oh, I was charged and found guilty. Sorry, I, we pleaded guilty to the conspiracy and aggravated um, ag bird. All right. So, so what was the, what was the job, man, that you were, were going to do the, the conspiracy? So what was that job? And um, how did you end up um, like getting under surveillance and all of that? The boys I was with, one of them just got out of Goulburn and Goulburn is the maximum security in New South Wales. And about they were running surveillance on him for three months. So he come down and it was, he was wreaking havoc, bro. Like he, he had no care whatsoever. But they were watching him and they um the New South Wales Task Force, I forgot what their name was, and the Victoria Task Force, they joined and just they were just watching us. Footages and all. Oh, so they were watching him and then they didn't that they were watching him, they're watching me. They had every footage of even right even the, the week that we we're doing in, in Agberg, they didn't even have footages there. Oh, like wow. the sign was there when our getaway car was gone. Oh, <laughs> Did not pay no attention to it, you know. They just went to go get another hottie. Mm. When I mean hottie, another car. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what was the actual job, man? The conspiracy? Um, supposed to be a half a mil in the bag when everyone's counting up all the money from the Melbourne Cup. Yeah, so this was the Melbourne Cup, huh? 
Yes, it was around the Melbourne Cup time when at so the you TAB, timed it to to get most of the money. Or somehow someone was saying that it's you know it's hundred percent. You're saying hundred percent. You got to go and do it. You know, if, if it's a half a mil, we got to try not to hurt no one. I was like, bro, I can go grab that bag and just walk out of it. If they want to do anything, you know, you got to do what you have to do. So what was sort of the plan, man, that they ended up getting you for? Um, we didn't get to the job. The, yeah. As close as the job we got, we got the getaway car uh, on that very morning before we pulled up to another house to get the firearm. We got the – and they saw all, they saw all the car that we got, a statesman, and it was one of the guys who can pop it and start it. And he had a park still on. And we were going to go and get – well, we went to go get our – zip ties and what it, somewhat if the first job didn't come through we we're going for the other job and unfortunately not unfortunately sorry i'll rephrase that um by the grace of god we didn't go through we were arrested right there on the spot as we pulled out of the driveway like i had a sesh before we hopped in the car i say 10 seconds and this is a one-way road like one way in um ballarat that's a one-way road and bang, like, what? He hit the island. This was going through my head. He hit the island, but as I looked up, it was just SWAT cars smashing the front, the back, and the sides as well. All armed up, ready to blaze, you know? So what did they actually, so who actually got done in that car? And like, what did they find at that time? It was just a load firearm they found. So what they've done, is the f- they put the firearm on my lap because I had no rap sheet whatsoever. I caught like the boys I was with, they got they got pages like 1980s you're looking at, and they got rap sheets. I had nothing like zero, so I could I could walk, but unfortunately, you know, a newbie being in the crime scene like the, this was pretty heavy, and um. Yeah, we all went down for it, bro. Um, four days in the cells, four days at uh, at the map, and then they shifted us off to uh, MRC. So, how many of them were you? Oh, there was four of us. There was four of us, um, and I think two of them, was, two of them, are still. I think they've been extradited to Sydney and that. Might be doing over 20 years still. So, um, yeah, man. So, okay, so two years, two months on Roman at the MRC. Um, you know, by the end of that two years, you know, you've pretty much adapted to sort of uh prison life and that. I remember I came to prison, you know, during your whole Roman time and that came over there, came over to C Yard for a little bit before I went over to A Yard there. And, um, you know, you pretty much had a good reign on things at that point. You know, you were sort of like one of the older boys and all of that. So, um, and you were talked about a lot in the prison, you know, pretty well respected, respected by a lot of boys and that. So did you find that you sort of adjusted to prison life in a way quite quickly and sort of, um, you know, got your standing there? And um, It was a bit hard at the start, I, I mm-hmm. must admit. Um, when I say hard is because I left my partner outside with everything. You know, we we had a good life, but when when the breadwinner is not around, you know, it, it takes a toll and it adds a bit of strain. And I I felt for her, and even even to right up to this day, you know. Um, her being outside all alone. And that, 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 that was hard for me because inside, you, you just, I, I'm an easygoing bloke, you know. I can just see an islander. How you doing, us? You know, how you doing, brother? Sweet. Um, but for me, I, I was doing it hard for her because I left her. The choice I made to go get that paper, I didn't think of the consequences of leaving my, the love of my life outside. But other than that, I, I, I adjusted. 
I, I see a basketball ring, I saw a gym, I was like, that, that's easy. Mm-hmm. I mean, just put your time there. Um, and the MRC, I, I learned quite a lot. Mm-hmm. I actually learned quite a lot. It was I ended up becoming the barber there. So I get to speak yeah. to mm-hmm. every person that comes through. Yeah. All the crumbs and all the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, there to do the haircut. The two dollar haircut walking out with a fifteen dollar fade, or whatever, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever it cost. But it, it was a good experience, you know. And um, played footy over there, AFL every every uh, every Saturday, just to yeah. put guys in the medical center. Like that was just, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sounds stupid now. Forgive me, Lord, but you know, it just. You know, had to take our anger out on people. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, the training regime started kicking in. Yeah, so I, I try to do my best just to keep the boys active, punching and doing what's whatever pad work. Yeah. Uh, that, that's something I love to do as well. Yeah. And uh, in AR, we're doing a lot of wrestling there, a lot of grappling. Yeah. With some yeah. of the Serbian boys and some of the brothers in, in the clubs. It's funny. It's funny that I let you spar, but we're allowed to grapple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um so we did you um sort of do your time at both so Fulham and that eh, Marganite? Yes. Um I ended up going to Marganite, but I just want to add to to something that I've learned since I the maximum with it. Like you remember that a-, a asterisk, oh, yeah, <laughs> and, all, <laughs> a double asterisk. and all that garbage. Uh, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. people was like, Yeah, you, if you can drop all that down to like a B minimum, this you'll yeah. go to that job. Yeah. Uh, you get all, I was like, Oh, really? So yeah. I put that in the back of my mind. Yeah. So I did my best yeah. to bring that a asterisk, whatever the crap, all down to minimum. Yeah. Uh, I ended up going to Marganita. Wow. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a little university, you know what I mean? Mm. Students of crims. <laughs> <laughs> but my boys are like so they went to a few different prisons. Um, like you said, yeah. So they've got levels in uh, Melbourne there. They've got like A level, B level, C level. Um yes. me, unfortunately, I spent all my time on A. So I, I never got out to Marganita or Fulham or anything. Oh, well, I got to Fulham for a little bit, but then yeah, they had a big riot there and then I left again. <laughs> well, but, don't worry, we saw that. <laughs> we yeah, saw that but, on the news. <laughs> yeah, nah, so, um, but yeah, nah, so then you ended up going to Fulham and then you spent a couple of years there, uh, and then, um, yeah, and then. I spent um, about five years at, uh, in Fulham. Prior to Fulham, I'll just add the, the, the cultural side of the, the, the Māori culture, the Waitangi thing I come in tune with, was we done it at uh, Margani as well. And um, uh, came down to Fulham and um, I just got straight into it, you know. Um, these do Waitangi days here. I said, yes. I said, I want to I get myself involved. Um, so I did. Um, got into the Waitangi culture and learning the Māori culture like proper, like mm. everything that was taught to me from, it started from MRC actually and I just carried it through to uh, to Margani and then now Fulham where I spent most of the duration and you know, that's probably the best day on the calendar in the jail where you sit with your family, you eat mm. proper food, not these vending machine food, you know and that just that became like a, how do you say, a school of, I used it to gather all the boys together, to learn about each other, sing songs. And we also took it out on the field too, you know, got to condition the boys' lungs and <laughs> maybe the frustrations out on each other, the yeah. shoulder charge was on. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Sierra comes out here and calls a code on us. <laughs> it's like the touch. But other than that, um, Fulham, man, uh, it, it made me, it made me into a person that I am today. Because the man upstairs was prepping, me, and yeah. I thank him for that. Yeah. And um, so the Waitangi days, just to touch on that, yeah. So in Australia, there in the prison system, 
uh, well, in Melbourne anyway, they've got sort of culture days for, um, you know, different uh, nationalities and that, you know, they've got a day for, you know, the Viets and they've got a day for the the Kuris or the Aboriginals, you know, they've got like NADOC day and, yes. and then for us, they've got Waitangi day. So it's sort of like the Polynesian day as well. Um, so, yeah. So what about all the politics sort of stuff, man, during your time in prison? So did you pretty much keep out of that sort of stuff or stay clear of just the whole headaches that come with that or... Yeah, the boys, no. I, I just keep my nose clean, bro. I just do my own thing. Because my schedule was, was as hectic as it is, like just keeping fit. I'll be in the gym three times a day. And in the morning, I run my class. In the afternoon, I'll be throwing the, the weights up. And by night, I'm probably balling or, or soccer or, or volleyball, either one of the two. And Yeah, there was a lot of politics. And, hey, you know, each brother for their own. And... We do have cross paths. Uh, I probably only had one little little hiccup, and you know that that's all said and done back then. Mm. But just somehow, I just humbled myself to it, conditioned to humble my heart throughout the whole jail sentence. And and the brothers know, like I, I'm there for them. Mm. But you know, yeah, any no, of those well, other rubbish. Yeah. No, well, good on you, you know what I mean, for staying out of the politics uh, during your time and that, which is hard to do, you know what I mean? So that definitely is a credit to you. You know, obviously, yeah, like you were saying, God's sort of preparing the path for you um, to what you were heading down. So, I mean, um, yeah, after your time and that, um, so you've done your time now. So you ended up coming back to Port Phillip, eh? so that's where we sort of met up again before you uh, came back here. So, um, yeah, because Port Phillip's like the transition prison, you know what I mean? So um, if you're getting deported, whatever prison you're at, you'll come to Port Phillip before heading out. Um, so it was good seeing you again after all of those years before you came back. Um, yes. So, yeah, now nah, sort of seeing you leave that morning. And then um, so what was all that experience, man, coming back on that plane? And I mean, for coming back to a country you don't even know. Well, I barely could sleep that night. Um, I was with one of the boys, um, yeah, uh, and, man, I just couldn't wait. Oh, you know, when I saw you guys, I was like, man, this place is huge, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor <laughs> people. Funny, eh, cuz, like, I'm sitting in front of you eating because I couldn't notice you with your long hair. Go, oh, yeah. it's me, David. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sorry, my cousin, you know, till, till we started talking, oh, bro, that's, you know, to your family like that. <laughs> Sorry, my cousin, but, Yeah, miss my know, long hair, though. I used to have a <laughs> long mullet, but, yeah, cut it off, but, yeah, good times, good times. Yeah, I couldn't so, wait um... to get out of Port Phillip, cuz. Oh, I seriously <laughs> couldn't wait. And I, like, you know, the next option of me was being on the plane. Yeah. And, brother... Yeah. I think, you know, this feeling too. They wake you up. They had a shower, got ready in the same greens again. And then just putting on a different clothing, bro. Mm. You put on your trackies. And then you put on proper shoes. You know, nice shoes. Yeah. Then they take you into a van, bro. That just spun me the hell out. Because we're so used to looking in the bus in the little window. Mm. And then you're in the van where you can see the whole 360, you know, coming out of Port Phillip, yep. going through Melbourne City. That was a sad moment, but unfortunately, that's that's part of God's plan to to bring me here. I was I was tripping, I was tripping, I was tripping like you, I barely slept, and they're carrying, you know. The funniest thing, the, the two escorts were just no, no hard in my shoulders. It's the funniest thing walking through, uh, uh, walking through the international airport, and then on the plane. Mm. Yeah. The plane's the funniest, going past all the passengers. Yeah, yeah. So you get marched through in cuffs when you're getting deported, which That's isn't cool. a nice feeling, though, man. After getting out of prison, you know, and you just sort of want to get out, and you have to go through that whole nonsense. Um, but how was it for you, man, coming to New Zealand? You know, obviously, big difference from Melbourne. So, 
way different. So I started legging it up the road, and then I was like, oh, no, here we go. A car load full of blue boys, a car load of red boys, mm-hmm. you know, in their colours. I'm like, oh, man. The people that was housing us was, um, what do you call them, PARs or whatever they are. Yeah, PARs, the yeah, P-A-R-S. So they do the uh, deportee stuff here in, um, yeah. in New Zealand. Shout out to them, though. You know, shout out them, to PARs, yeah, Tony. Shout out shout to, out Paz, to man. you, brother. Thank you very much for setting me up a bank account. Yeah, yeah no, nah, PARs. Getting me the phone. I didn't know how to work. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, PARs did all that for me, too, when I came here. So, yeah, P-A-R-S. So, yeah, no, nah, good, 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 good people. Good value. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> Cause there's not much for us deportees when we come back here, man. Fuck, there ain't much. They no. pretty much just throw you out here and just that's it. Mm. Um, the funniest thing when the phone rang, bro, I was like, hello, and it still rang, bro. I was like, oh man, how do you answer this phone? <laughs> so like, oh. Oh, embarrassing, bro. But yeah. nevertheless, you know, I figured it out. You got to swipe. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But yes, um, me, me and my partner arrived on the same day, but we didn't get to see each other till the following day. And um, I thank God for her for doing the whole seven years outside while I was inside. And um, we met that day and um, we, we had to knuckle down what's going on, what are we going to do, but could we stay together? We couldn't stay together because of whatever, where they put me into some shared accommodation. So uh, her, her sister put her hand up, shout out to her sister too. And um, and that's where we housed for a little bit. And then we started knuckling down to... What are we gonna do? And she, we were expecting a baby as well. Yeah, we were expecting a baby, and uh, we got we had to try and get everything real quick before baby comes. And uh, we managed to get our to get ourselves set up. And I praise God for that because yeah. it wasn't easy, but we yeah. had to go through all that to get to where we are. Yeah. So overall, you know, uh, got it is tough, eh? Coming back here, getting deported. Absolutely. And, yeah. Culture shock, bro. Even though I was doing the culture things in there, yeah. But when you're when you're immersed in it, I was like, whoa! Like for me, really, eh? Every head was just on a screen. I was like, what the hell? I was like, what's going on? With people over here, like everywhere mm-hmm. I went in the in shopping malls, their heads are down. You know. Not conditioned to that, but that was a that was a shock for me. Just everyone just paying attention to this gadget, and hey, now I'm one of them people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, what, what's the plans now, cause so we you know again as I said at the start, we're about our father's business, man. We're fishermen now, trying to uh, bring people back to the Lord, you know. So is that sort of um the plans now, brother? Absolutely. And um, if you don't mind me just sharing a little bit, like when I arrived here, I was nothing for it. I was I was everything to go play league. I, I was playing league for Odahu Leopards. I come down with an injury, so I thought I'd just go play basketball. And then, he, then I got injured on the other leg, and I was like, man, Lord, are you telling me something? <laughs> and 100%. So you just stop running up. <laughs> Uh, I'm disabled in a good way because yeah. he has plans for me to work with the youth, to spend time with the youth, to to uh, change mindsets. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, and I'll, and I'll quickly share as well. Before I left Fulham, there was a program that was put in front of myself on TV that New Zealand had the highest suicidal rate. And me knowing now, I was like, he was putting signs in my path. And I was totally ignoring him, totally, because I was all about myself, go play league, get on the piss with the boys over here, trying to fit in 
in the culture here, but I, I struggled with it because I was like, oh, not my cup of tea, you know what I mean? Like, what's funny to them wasn't funny to me. Mm. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got to live and learn and adjust and, you know, just be around boys. But love the brothers, you know? And yeah, I um, found that too hard adjusting like that, trying to find that common ground, even though we're all Polynesians and that it is different. You know, I found that as well. Yeah, I was like, not really laughing at the same thing that other people are laughing at. I didn't, couldn't find the humor, you know, after living in Oz and that. But yeah. it comes with time. It comes with time. And um, so I thought I'd get into coaching to uh, with some of the league under 14s and under 15 basketball and that. You even coaching bit. AFL there for the Aussie rules over here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, coaching a real AFL team boys here, and you know they're, they're good brothers too. Yeah, Carl. and shout out to the brothers that's come on the show that that are putting the time in for for the use. He's all in my prayer, and uh, yes, let's help the the young boys here and the young girls too. Change that statistic. Bring that number one suicidal rate. Yep. squash it that's our goal to squash it yeah that's our goal all right because you know that's a big motivation behind this whole felon show thing even though i get all sorts of boys on here man we have a laugh and a joke about you know part of done stuff we've done in the past and we talk about prison but there's an overall plan with this man it's, it's just to help the youths out there man um guide them you know sort of show the realities of all of this shit man you know, um, because it ain't no pretty life, man. You know what I mean? That whole crime thing and that is it's no joke, man. You know, um, you can lose your life real quick in it, you know. Um, you can end up in the deep end real quick. Um, before you know it, things can happen, bad things. Um, mental health is huge, man. You know, depression and this whole thing is huge. Absolutely. Um, you know, no see no feelings of self-worth. You know what I mean? That's why a lot of people end up doing so long in jail because they just feel like their lives are worth nothing anymore. And, um, you know, it's just uh, it's just all about coming back to God, man, or, you know, that higher, higher power, you know, because he is there. He is on our side. Absolutely. And, uh, he's batting for us, man. He wants to see us. He wants to see us do good. Absolutely. So, yeah, cause. man, I think we might leave it there, my cuz. Um, man, thank you so much for uh, sharing your testimony, man. I've been hanging to get this guy on for a bit now. So I uh, finally jumped on. You're most welcome. Yes. Oh, well, do you have anything else to say, man, for the viewers out there before we uh, wrap this up? Yes. I'd like to challenge each and every one of us that are watching right now. Put him first in your life. Put God first. And he, he, will, he will direct your path, man. Don't doubt that. You know, he's done it for me and my cousin here and a lot of people that jump on the show. So, um, yeah, man, it is real. You don't have to go to church, you know what I mean, to, to follow the word of God. You know what I mean? It's, it's not about that. You know, church is just an awesome place for us to come together, but it's outside of the church that counts. You know what I mean? It's your daily walk. So, um, again, man, much appreciations for you jumping on, cuz. And um, we'll talk soon, huh? For sure. Love and leave you, my cousin.